Hey guys, how you doing? It's Terry Curran here, and in today's video, we're actually going to be learning how to trim these little cocktail cups that I like to make. Um, before the video goes much further, if you're on Instagram or Facebook, don't forget to like and share. And if you're on YouTube, please go ahead and hit that little subscribe button so that every time I put out a new video, it'll let you know. So thanks again for turning into tuning into Terry Curran TV, and I'll see you soon. Hi guys, how you doing? It's Terry Kern here and I'm going to do a short trimming tutorial um, today. The other day I did a tutorial on throwing off the hump and I threw some small cocktail cups and today I'm going to trim one of those little cocktail cups. Um, this is a finished cocktail cup and I just kind of want to show you what it looks like. It is little. It's a little bit large for a shot glass and you can see that I've trimmed the bottom out here. So this is what this guy started like and you can see that it has a flat bottom and we're actually going to trim this bottom area out and i'm going to show you how you do that so let's get started so the first thing that i like to do is put my fingers in the piece and actually feel where the interior bottom of the clay is and i can feel that it comes right about in here so i just will take my finger and i'll just make a little line here as just a reminder to myself that also lets me know how much clay I have that I'm gonna be trimming away from the surface. Now this piece is actually a little drier than I like, so sometimes I'll just dip it in water like that just to get it wet. And you'll see that the water will pretty quickly evaporate, and that's okay. We're just gonna let that water kind of soak in so that it's nice and pliable when I go to trim it. So this piece was a little bit wet, so I just dunked it in some water, and that's going to put a little bit of moisture in the clay. Sometimes if I don't get back to my pieces, um, they're a little bit dry, and that can kind of mess you up in your trimming. So the first thing that I like to do is I'm big on the targets. So here's a little bit of clay. I'm actually going to make a little line here on the wheel head to give myself a basic idea of what the center is, right? I put my fingers down in here and I'm actually feeling for where the interior bottom of this piece is. And I can tell that it's right about here. So I'm actually gonna make a little line with my fingernail and that's where I know uh, that's like my goal for the trimming. So I'm just gonna sit this guy right on here and I'm gonna take my needle tool and I'm gonna try to recenter this piece. Now there's lots of different ways that people recenter. Some people are really good at like doing the tapping method or they just sit it down and use a gip and grip. I learned this needle tool method and it's, it's just what I've always done. Um, I have tried the tapping method and I've tapped a lot of my pieces right off the wheel head. So here we go. So I'm gonna take my needle tool and I'm just going to make a line And what happens is if you take your needle tool around you can see that the line is really deep here and as I go around it's going to get a little bit thinner here so I'm actually going to find that thin spot and I'm going to pull that little uh, cup towards me and now I'm going to hit it again with the needle tool and uh, as happens sometimes I actually made it a little more off-center so I'm gonna start that over and I'm gonna draw another needle tool line right up here and I can see right here that the needle tool line isn't as deep so I'm gonna get that back towards me I'm gonna put my fingers in that little area and I'm gonna pull the piece towards me just a little bit and here we go that seems pretty on center to me I mean, let's face it, I'm not the best on center throw. All my stuff is a little bit off, just like Terry Kern, so it's fine. And I'm just gonna take these little uh, pieces of clay and I'm actually gonna use these to anchor the clay to the wheel head. I like to go in fours or threes, so. And you can see I'm not jamming the clay onto the piece, I'm actually pressing the clay right up to the piece and then I'm pressing the clay down to the wheel head and that's what that looks like. Now I'm going to start with one of my trimming tools and I'm just going to start to trim the sides off just like this. My wheel is going not as fast as it was when I was throwing and I'm actually going to try and straighten this out a little bit with my trimming tool. There we 
go. That's better. Now I'm actually, when I made these lines that came around, I actually made them where the interior um, bottom of the piece is. So I'm gonna use that as my guide. And I'm just gonna stick this little guy right here. And I'm actually gonna start shaping the outside of my cocktail cup. I have a variety of these um, trimming tools. They have different shapes, they do different things. So, you know, if you're just doing something in your studio and you're just getting started and you're like, gosh, what does this do? Throw something, let it get leather hard, flip it upside down, recenter it, and then just play. You know, figure things out, experiment, have some fun. So I'm actually trimming the bottom. And remember, I'm just gonna hold this next to it so you can see I'm trimming this part out right here, okay? That's what I'm really working on. And sometimes, just like when I'm throwing, I'll wanna have one of those pieces close by so I can refer to it visually. I like to give my pieces nice kind of dainty little feet. And when I'm trimming, I'm always thinking about what I'm going to paint on the surface and I'm trying to create areas for myself where I can add additional, you know, design, whether it's a band of color or little leaves or dots or dashes or something like that. So I like to create those spaces for myself on the piece and that happens during the time, period of time when you trim. Now, because I know I've gotten the shape pretty much the way I want it on the, on the top, I'm really just focusing on the part that's gonna be the bottom of the piece. And I look from the side a lot to try and get an idea of what that finished piece is gonna look like. And I want that foot to be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to carve away at it. Just like that. like that. Now, as I said, there's a variety of different size uh, and shapes. I'm going to use this smaller trimming tool to get in this little tiny area here. And it's fun to experiment. You can have uh, sides that go straight up and down. I like to give mine a little bit of a curve because the form of my little cocktail cup has got a little bit of a curve to it. So when you're working on the design of your form, you want to take some of those design elements. If they're straight, you want to have another area that's straight. If there's curve, you want to have another little area of curve. So just like when you paint the surface of your piece and you have polka dots at the top and then you have some polka dots at the bottom to draw the viewer's eye from the top to the bottom. The same thing when you're creating your form. If you've got some curves on your form someplace, you wanna draw the viewer's eye down to the bottom and find that same curve in another area that's lower on your piece. Again, you want that viewer to look uh, at your piece from the top to the bottom and everywhere in between. Okay, I'm gonna give it a little bit more of a curve here. Now, I've never turned any wood, but I, I kind of think that this is probably somewhat similar to that process. And now I'm going to trim the foot. So I'm going to place this tool right in the middle and then I'm going to slowly bring it towards me. I think these are super cool. I'm going to continue to, to pass my tool across the top several more times. And for this part, what I'm trying to remember is where the interior bottom of my little cup is. So when I think I'm getting close, I want to slow my speed down just a little bit and I want to start using lighter and lighter pressure because there's nothing worse than getting a really beautifully trimmed shape and then carving right through the bottom, which I admit I've done many times. Which is why I know now that I want to take my time here. There we go. I like 
starting to give it one more look. Now this, this shape is kind of kind of low and squat. I think this is a shape that I'm going to be maybe uh, Sister Mary Sake because I like that idea of a kind of I'm thinking like, you know, like a, a sumo wrestler sister, if you know what I mean. So I'm just going to do one more pass here. I'm going to soften this edge with my tool because I don't really want to have any sharp edges. I want everything to be kind of nice and soft. I like to trim in a shadow line at the bottom. A lot of people are like, hey, what's a shadow line? So something that's really cool, one way to make your pieces feel like they are light and are lifted off the surface of your tabletop is that when you are trimming, you want to trim a slight 45 degree angle at the very bottom of your piece. And what happens when you sit this piece on the table, a little shadow will be cast all the way along the foot of your piece, making it look like it's just hovering over the surface of the table. So think of like Star Wars and Luke Skywalker and his Gosh, what were those things called? Anyway, it's the little uh, space, the little space pilot thingy that that just hovers over and stuff. Maybe it's called a hovercraft. Hovers right on the surface, but that is the same um, same principle here. If I can apply Star Wars fan fiction to uh, throwing and trimming on the wheel, you know I'm gonna do it because I love my Star Wars. Just went a little bit country. You guys remember Donnie Marie? I'm a little bit country and I'm a little bit rock and roll. Sorry, <laughs> I'm letting my inner geek flag fly. Okay, the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take a, a slightly damp sponge and I'm just gonna run it all along the surface of the piece just to soften up any sharp edges. And now uh, this little cup is ready to take off the wheel head. So I'm just gonna pull this clay right off, just like that. Again. And now have a beautiful, nice little cup, all right? Now, something that sometimes happens uh, if your clay is a little wet, if you look at this, it's not perfectly round. So there's two ways to fix that. I can either take something that's round, stick it inside like this and turn it to get it rounded, just like this. Oh, now it's completely round. Or I could take that kind of mistake and I could make it square. And it's really easy to square something off at the top I just sit it right back in the center. I take my thumbs and my the middle of my uh, my middle fingers and I just press in. I turn the wheel till I get the opposite side. Hook your thumbs in here and then press in. And then you're going to do the other two sides and now you've got a nice little round cup that's squared at the top. And again, these are all the fun kind of things that you can do when you're throwing on the wheel. And now I've got a perfectly little squared top. So thanks so much for watching me trim uh, this little Sister Mary um, sake cup that I just made. And I hope you guys have a great day in your studio. And thanks so much for watching Terry Kern TV. See you till next time. Set, go. Hey everybody, thanks so much for checking out my latest YouTube video. Um, if you enjoyed it, please hit the little subscribe button right there at the bottom and then subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you hit the little bell notification, then every time I publish something new, you'll be notified. So that's pretty cool. And if you know someone who you think might be interested in the video, feel free to share it with them and help me spread how cool ceramics is around the world. Thanks so much and I hope you have a great day. Bye! Till next time!